Hello, my name is Jason Maranto, and I'm going to be teaching you a little bit about how to use the SketchUp to Maxwell plugin. Now, this is not meant to be a comprehensive training series. This is simply introduction to how to use this particular plugin. I do have training series for Google SketchUp as well as the Maxwell Render Core applications. So you're more than welcome to look at those if you want to learn more about how those applications work independently of each other. And at a later date, I will be producing a full length series on this particular plugin as well. So like I said, this is just an introduction. Now, the thing that you want to know about this to begin with is that I'll be working in SketchUp Pro 6. And the reason why is because that's the oldest version of this plugin that's supported. This means that everybody will be able to know how to use this plugin from 6, 7, and 8. The reason why is because the interface in SketchUp hasn't changed much from version 6 through version 8, so it's all pretty much the same thing. I'm also going to be using a 3D mouse to navigate in SketchUp, and it's made by a company called 3D Connection, which is a subsidiary of Logitech, and if you've never used one of these before, then it really is kind of a treat, and it's really making my productivity with SketchUp that much more productive. So I highly recommend that you look into one of those if you've never used them before. So I won't be using these navigational tools up here too often except for to fine tune some things. So that said, let's go ahead and take a look at the scene that we have currently going here. This is a scene that'll be available in some work files that you can download off the Think site. It'll contain this SketchUp file, which is called Maxwell Scene version 6.skp or SketchUp file. And it'll also have some MXM materials as well as a couple image maps and some various different things that you can use for this particular scene so that you can play with some of the ideas that I've talked about here and get an idea of how these things work. So to begin, I'm just gonna zoom out real quick. And the one thing that you should know is that you may see me clicking on an object every so often. The reason why is because this particular 3D mouse, what it does is it centers the rotation on whatever I have selected. So this is going to allow me to fine tune how I want things to happen. So let's go ahead and take a look at the scene. The first thing that we have here is we have a studio type setup. We have one, two, three simple planes, and those are going to be our emitter planes or our reflected light planes. You also may see a little tiny sphere right there. What that sphere is, is it's going to be for an IES light. And whenever we do IES lights, we want to use a little sphere like this in order to make sure that we have a proper fall off for our light. The other thing we have here is we have a background here, and it's one of those sort of seamless fall off studio type backgrounds where we don't have to worry about getting hard edges and getting funky shadows because of it. But the subject here is simply two coffee cups on a mat on a table. And this mat and table and coffee cups and most of this other stuff has existed in one form or another for several versions of Maxwell now. And I just kind of tweaked it up a little bit for SketchUp and made sure that it would be more usable for us and our purposes. So let's go ahead and look at the toolbar for Maxwell. Once you've installed Maxwell in whatever version of SketchUp you're using, if you go up to View, Toolbars, and you go down here, you'll see Maxwell. If you click on that, this is the toolbar that you're going to see for this particular version of the plugin. Now, this plugin is broken down into several sections, and the first section is getting stuff out of SketchUp. Here we can actually go to Render, here we can export the studio, and here we can just save the MXS file, which is the Maxwell scene. Here we have the ability to browse on the web and also on our computer for various different MXM files, whatever we may have. This is going to be the most important thing. This is our scene manager. And if I click on that pencil tool, you'll see that this becomes what we're going to use for most of our demo here on this plugin. We also have an eyedropper tool. We have some focus controls, the focal depth, as well as our depth of field. And then we have some information stuff. This can bring up the different types of manuals and help files and stuff like this. So that's basically the little toolbar in a nutshell. It's not all that complicated. And like I say, the primary one that we're going to be most concerned with here is this pencil, which is the Maxwell Scene Manager. So the Maxwell Scene Manager has an interesting user interface that's very different from the one in SketchUp. It has its own appeal. However, it is a little bit different. I think I'll start here with our Options tab, which is this green check. You can see here that we can twirl these down, and when we twirl these down, you can see that we have sliders, but they don't look like normal sliders until you actually click on them. 
And by clicking on them and dragging, we're able to change the sliders here. And what I'm doing here is I'm changing the amount of undos. Now these are not the undos of SketchUp. These are the undos for the Maxwell Scene Manager. Next to that, you'll notice a little cube here. And if you click on that little cube, this will allow us to reset or get info. And, and this will be different depending upon whatever you're clicking next to. So that's just gonna reset us. And I'm gonna twirl that back up. Also, you may notice things like this where we have these red X's. What I can do here is I can delete these so that we no longer are using these particular paths if we don't want to. And that's something that will come into later when you're wanting to make sure that you have your textures for your MXMs. This is where you would set up the pass for that. The user interface, you can actually go in here and set up a custom or default file browsers. You can edit the color scheme if you choose to. And we can see here we even have some custom presets like dark. I prefer light personally, so you can do whatever you want to do with those. And frame rate. Well, this is an animated interface. And the higher the frames per second, the smoother the interface is going to look. However, it's also going to bog down your computer a little if you're on a slower computer. So I've set mine for 10. Diagnostics, you don't need to worry about those. Those are primarily there for Jeremy's benefit. Jeremy is the plugin developer. And if he asks you to turn these on and look at what they spit out for you, that's because you're having a problem and he's trying to figure out what it is. Over here, we have another interesting little tweak of the user interface here. We have the more information arrow. And if we click on that, you'll see that we have less information now, meaning that we only have these little bit of information. But if we click on the more information, we get all these extra fields that are propagated and we can begin to twirl those down and look at those options. And you'll see those on several of these tabs. This is our undo and our redo buttons. And again, you have your presets. So you can add a preset if you want to for wherever you're at. You'll see that several times in the course of the interface. So that said, I think that's probably a good idea of how this particular user interface works. What I wanna talk about now really briefly is the WYSIWYG concept. And WYSIWYG stands for what you see is what you get. And Jeremy designed this user interface and the way that he designed the plugin to be a very much WYSIWYG type of thing. Now, that's very ambitious considering that SketchUp does not have any type of look to it that would resemble a render from Maxwell. And so it really is kind of difficult to have a what you see is what you get. However, he attempted to make it as much of that as you possibly can. And of course, that gets into this whole question of, well, when do you give up on SketchUp and when do you go into studio? What is your production workflow? What are your expectations from the render engine? What are your expectations from SketchUp? And so there's a lot of things to consider when you determine, okay, well, how good is the WYSIWYG here? Again, this is not a limitation of the plugin. This is a limitation of SketchUp. That said, when you go and you do things like zoom in and zoom out. So, you know, if I'm zooming in like this, this is modifying the camera in Maxwell. This is very much the camera in Maxwell. And as a matter of fact, we can have as many cameras as you want. And in SketchUp, the cameras would be known as scenes. So every time we add a scene, that becomes a new camera in Maxwell. And we can tweak the parameters of that camera. So I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna do something like so. I'm gonna add another scene, just like so, create scene. And now we have two different cameras that we can bounce back and forth in. Now these work exactly the way that cameras do in Maxwell. So we can tweak these utilizing our scene manager by going to the cameras tab. And any changes that we make in this cameras tab will be changed in this scene. And then if we switch to the other scene, these settings will all go back to where they were. So these settings here are tied to that scene there. It's important to know that because if you don't know that, you might be wondering, well, why isn't it saving my changes? Well, it's only saving the changes for each camera, and that would be the same as it would be in studio. So those are some of the user interface concepts, and we're going to move on now to actually working with this file.